Oh my god, what are Rick and Ryan up to now? It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Hey, welcome one and all to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Mr. Big Show himself, Ryan Pulley. Ryan, what's what up, good, brother? What up? Do me a favor. Yeah. Let me see both your hands. Okay, we didn't blow off any phalanges on the 4th of July, so we're good. All right, just <laughs> let's just do it a finger check. It's been a couple weeks. Yeah, I've got all my digits, so we're, <laughs> we're good. Um, other than the fourth, how was your weekend? Um, it was pretty good. I was on the road, went down to Dallas last weekend. Uh, my oldest son, uh, granddaughter, she turned one. So we went down there for that. Drove down Thursday, came back Saturday. So it was pretty, pretty uneventful besides the party. I mean, you know, basically on the road all weekend. Been there, done that. I understand brother, but when it's family, it's so worth it. Yes. So, just to give everybody a preview of uh, what we got in the store for uh, the folks, not just today, but uh, looking on forward to, um, obviously, we're going to talk about entertainment stuff today. I want to talk about some box office bombs. Um, I ran across a uh, a, a story about uh, two sport athletes. I want to go into that and use that as a bridge to start our NFL stuff off here. Uh, each. Ba, 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 ba. Thank you very much. Each week, I want to go through a different division, uh, north, south, east, and west, all the way down. And that would get us uh, all the way up to probably uh, uh, the middle of training camp, if not the end of training camp. So. That's where I'm going with that today. Now, quick rewind to go back to the beginning. I do want to kick off with some entertainment stuff. Uh, this article, I, I couldn't help but laugh because it's kind of true. Box office bombs, the 20 biggest box office bombs of all time. Now, I'm not going to, you know, waste our time on all of them. But I do want to go over some very significant ones. Now, the reason why I'm focusing on those, we had a lot of big movies that, well, quote unquote, supposed to be big that came out uh, this year. You take away Guardians of the Galaxy and everybody else's quote unquote big movie. Um, they reported that they didn't do as well as they could have. I won't say they all bomb, but. Not too many have done very well. I'm looking. What at you, defines Ryan. a bomb? What defines a bomb? And, and that's where we'll want to lead off with that because to me, and this is just me, what defines a bomb is a movie that did not uh, meet expectations. And that's what the producers put on them as far as expectations, not what the audience will put on them or anything like that. Um, because the audience, you know, that can be very fickle. I'm looking at you, Star Wars fans, because I am a Star Wars fan too. Um, but I'm I'm more or less talking about if X amount of million dollars was dropped to make this movie, and this movie has X amount of million for advertising, and then we've got X million for um promotional and stuff like that. You have to recuperate all that back just to break even and then all of it again to turn a profit and there there have been a couple hundred 150 million dollar movies that uh may have gotten uh 100 million dollars at the uh box office but uh they haven't uh recuperated all their money again looking at you flash I think it was on pace for like 90 million or less. That's not good. 
Hey, it's at 105 million right now. So it's at 105? 105.5. Okay, so it's avoided being the all-time stinker in movie history, but I guarantee you it costed more to make that movie. But that's well, a whole about to. Are we about to find out? Because you know, I'm I'm the statistician of the group, so I'm about to find out. And while you look at that, I'm just going to run down some of these all time box office bombs. And now, be- be- before you go to the list, I mm-hmm. wanted to. I I looked at the list, and I can tell why majority of these things bombed. I ain't never heard of some of these movies. <laughs> well, if you start with the first one, I had never heard of it. How do you yeah. know? And I see that it has Reese Witherspoon in it, and um, old dude from Ant Man. Um, what was his name? Uh, you I know, know you're talking about the okay. the main the older Ant Man, right? Yeah, no, the younger Ant Man. Oh, not Michael Douglas. Um, um, well, let me just pull it up here because his name should be on there. Okay, wait. It said Reese Wilson, uh, Reese Reese Willerspoon, excuse me, Owen Wilson and Jack Nicholson. Okay, so why does it look? Oh yeah, Paul Rudd. That's him. He's in there too. So it's got some star power, but. Oh my God! It sucked, and it costed one hundred and forty-four million. So why are you doing that? What was that called? Um, how do I know? Mate, how do I know? Yeah, it it made one hundred and forty million, and it costed one hundred and twenty million to produce. That's just the production. So when you take in the advertising and all that. Yeah, I can. See I'm gonna say they didn't. I'm gonna say they didn't spend a whole lot in advertising because I had never heard of it. That is also true. I mean, they yeah, they probably shot themselves in the foot. Um, I'm not gonna go through all these because there's a lot that I don't particularly care for. Here's one: A Wrinkle in Time. Uh, I remember this movie for one particular reason. I'll go over that in a second. But it was a Disney movie about these witches or whatever. Uh, yeah, I I am not in it for the cutesy Disney movies. I do have children, but they are boys. We don't care. Move on. I only remember this movie because it had a single from Sade on there. A newly released single. So, and because I knew that that was the only music from Sade that we were going to be getting in 2000 and what was it? 19 that it came out? 2018. And you know, if you were a fan of Sade, it could be another 10 years before she puts out the next album. So take what you right. can get. But th- you here's know. here's my other question. Is how long does the movie have to be out before it's considered a flop? I am not sure on that one. I want to say... Opinion. I want to say six, Two months? Three months? To, to me, six, six weeks. Six because, weeks. Yeah, because you'll know in a month and a half, whether or not the movie's going to gain traction or lose traction. You'll know. Um, There are very, very few exceptions. Uh, well, from what I know about the movie industry, nine times out of ten, when a movie drops opening weekend, that next weekend, they make less money than they did when they opened. There are very, very few movies that make a little bit more. Or stay the same. Because the movie business is competitive. There's always going to be one coming out the very next week. Here's another one that bombed. Mulan, the live version. Can we just stop doing live versions of Disney cartoons? Can we stop it? How much did it make? Let's see here. It cost ninety million and earned over three hundred million. Wow! And that's yeah. not a flop. Disney considers that a flop. Let me see what they say here. Cost ninety and they made three. Came out in twenty twenty. It earned a mere seventy million. It says it costed two hundred million and earned seventy million. Oh, okay. So what am I looking at? Mulan's losses totaled one hundred and fifty nine million. A far cry from the original. Okay. Okay, the cartoon. The cartoon cost ninety million and earned cost ninety million. and made three hundred million. Yeah, uh, that that further proves what I was saying. But that's also a little easier because you don't have, you know, it's easier to draw the effects than make them. 
Yeah, but that movie made. I mean, I say easier, but cheaper. You know. I I agree. I mean, they should stick with animation at all times. Big stars don't guarantee to help you. Eddie Murphy's no. a big star. He was coming off of Beverly Hills Cop, Coming to America, and Forty Eight Hours, and he did The Adventures of Pluto Nash. What year did that come out? Because Beverly Hills Cop and all that came out in the eighties. Yeah, this came out in two thousand and two. Yeah, he was well past that. He was in his uh, Doctor Doolittle days, where he wasn't the same comedian that he was when we were growing up. I can see that. I can see that. Um, but the movie did suck. Be nice, Ricky. Be nice. All right, another one that's on this. Okay. Can't just blame Disney on this. Whoever this studio is. Pan, which is a retelling of Peter, P Peter Pan in live action. Why? If it ain't broke, people don't fix it. You love the right. cartoon, you grew up with the cartoon, do the damn cartoon. And that's it. <laughs> and here's here's one that I forgot about. Cutthroat Island. I don't know if you remember that. It came out with Gina Davis. It was a Rennie Harlan movie. Um, it was in the 90s that it came out. Uh, cost him between 90 and 100 million. And it made a legendarily terrible 10 million upon its release. <laughs> Ooh, now, that's bad. Here, here's bad. the part. Here's the part that's the kicker. This was like 40 years ago. Adjusted for inflation, that amounts to a $202 million loss for this movie. Holy mackerel. Damn, how do you drop millions of dollars and then you only get $10 million at the box? Woo, yeah. Um, that pretty much ended a lot of careers. Here's one that I didn't know was a flop. Uh, the 13th Warrior. Do you remember that with Antonio Banderas? It came out uh, in 1999. I, 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 do, have, rem I, never I do remember it. I saw it on DVD. Um, it earned only $62 million at the box office, and uh, that gave it a $227 million loss. See, but that's where... That's the that's the reason why theaters the movies are losing money, right? Is because that was the DVD rush. So everybody was waiting for the DVD that didn't make it to the theaters. And like now we're streaming stuff. How do the movies like does that not collect? I mean, does that not count towards the overall collective of what the movie made? How many people stream it? How many people bought a DVD? Um Earnings do come out later. They do adjust once the uh, home video comes out and everything. So I can definitely see that. But uh, at their time, it, it did it did kill it. These are just strictly theater. Yeah, these right? are strictly not theater. overall. This made. is box office losses. Yeah, just just gotcha. the box office okay. at the time. You know, so I'm pretty sure Thirteen Warrior made a little bit of cash back, but it kind of sucks. So so. Those are some of the uh, box office flops. So when we hear stuff about The Flash or Indiana Jones or anything like that, and they say that they bomb, they're not among the biggest bombs because they didn't make But Indiana movie. Jones just came out, right? Like it a did. week ago. It did. So By it's way, not a did bomb you, Did you yet. see that movie yet? No, I won't see it. Okay, I was going to ask if you've seen it yet so I could get your input on it. I, I I'll, haven't I'll, seen it either. I'll wait. That's one of those streaming ones. I went to go see Flash because I, Flash is one of my all-time favorite DC characters. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it it costs $265 million to make. I looked it up. Mm. And they're at $105 million and it's been out for less than four weeks. So it may not be as big a flop as people might think. I don't think, you know, they may not break even, but um, I, it may not be as big as people think yeah I can, I, I can see that i mean let's say they only make about 200 million at the box office i know it's less than what it costed to make it but i'm pretty sure they'll make up for that with uh digital and uh dvd blu-ray sales i'd say if it makes that i'd call that 
a successful DC movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you break even, I know it breaks a lot of producers' hearts not to turn a profit, but if you break even, hey, you can at least put another notch on your belt. On your resume, you can say you made a superhero movie and move on. But, you know, uh, The Flash right now is the number 15th grossing movie of the year mm -hmm. so far. These are the movies that are in front of it. And in order, 14 through 1. Mm -hmm. Scream, number 753, whatever that, which one that is. Uh, Elemental, I think that's a cartoon. Okay. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny has already surpassed <laughs> The Flash. It's at number 12. And it's only been out for less than a week. Yeah, it's that's true. It's at 125 million. Uh, Puss in Boots, Fast X, number nine is Transformers Rise of the Beast, Creed 3, which I think absolutely sucked balls. You know, I, I own that movie and still haven't watched it yet. Uh, John Wick 4. Watch that on Saturday. Damn, I haven't watched it yet. Movie. It's a great movie. Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Media is number six. It's an okay movie. Yeah, it's pretty know. good. Avatar The Way of Water is number Still five. I haven't watched that one yet. It's a pretty decent movie. The remake of The Little Mermaid, the live action, is at number four. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is at number three. Spider Man Across the Spider Verse cartoon at number wow. two. That one's kicking butt then. And the number one is the Super Mario Brothers movie. Really? At 573 million gross right now and it came out in april 5th really? spider-man is at 358.9 million guardians of the galaxy is at 357.7 million i did not realize that having some technical difficulties with my camera but i did not realize yeah that, your video uh, pause super mario brothers was doing that wonder what's going on with the old camera there. The ones that are out now on that list remains to be seen. Let's give them to the end of the year. We're only halfway through the year. So positions will change. I think the reason why also, because The Flash is a pretty well put together movie overall, especially if you're into the 90s Batman yeah. saga type of thing with uh, Michael Keaton. I think the problem with it is all of the actual re reality turmoil that Ezra Miller went through and with the whole thing fighting DC and the way she, um, what Black Adam fell apart and the way that Cavill was rehired and then refired from being Superman and all of that and how bad, uh, what's the other movie, the, the bombed, Shazam. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that that's part of it. I just believe that. Uh, I mean, the Ezra Miller thing did make it suck worse, but they lost a lot of people long ago when they decided we're going to scrap the whole DC universe and redo it. You know, and I'm okay with that if they just stick to a game plan and make it work. Instead of, ooh, let's go this way. And as soon as the movie comes out, now nah, scratch that. Let's go left. And, you know, they just keep going in a circle. You know, well, at least Gunn Marvel has had, had a that, plan. Yeah, James Gunn has reported that he's rebuilding the DC universe the exact same way that Marvel was doing. So there will be lots when? of separate movies How? before you get a uh, team up next time. When? How? Well, the first movie is going to be Superman Legacy with that David Cornsweat person. Whom I've never heard of. But again, I'm old. I get it. I don't know a lot of these young folk. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about something we all can understand. Sports. I want to talk to you about the two sport athlete. And the uh, There's article. only two that really count. Exactly. That That's why I'm breezing through this, because a lot of these I do not know. I don't care about. 
but there's going to be a few that I'm going to comment on. But if but if you're running track and playing basketball, I don't really consider that a two athlete, a two sport athlete. Agreed. Agreed. I mean I mean, you can you can mention one. I mean, if you just look at number 33, and I love me Michael Jordan. Jordan's the greatest basketball player ever. But to put him you on can, here for basketball, basketball and baseball, really? Not, he didn't really play baseball. No, <laughs> I mean, he did. He suited up. He may have hit a few. But it was, no, he it was basically something to do between retirements. It really yeah, was. He, he definitely wasn't a baseball player, such as Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders. Oh, bleep. I can't really hit that curveball. Better go win another three championships. Right? Yeah. Uh, number 32, Jameis Winston. Really? He can barely play football. You got him on here for football and baseball. Come on. It's not. I don't want to see another football baseball player on here either, unless you're Brian Jordan, Deion Sanders, or Bo Jackson. Nobody Hold else up, counts. Though. Hold up, though. Here's my next thing. Just because you played baseball in college... <laughs> Or in a rec league, does not yes. make you a two sport athlete. Exactly. I mean, if that's the case, shit, I'm a three sport that sport athlete. Show, did you know that? Right. <laughs> I've surpassed them all. Let's see here, Chris Winkie, Scott Brill. I mean, these are some notable names, but they didn't do it. On Chris Winkie, what 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 did he do? Football and what else? Uh, they've got Chris at baseball, and again. He was most a second round pick for the Toronto Blue Jays. He played triple A. I mean Yeah, most quarterbacks are gonna be on there. I mean, you could put Russell Wilson on there, you could put Patrick Mahomes on there, you could put uh Aaron uh Rodgers on there. They all play baseball. John Elway played baseball. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dan Marino played baseball, Troy Aikman played baseball. They're not two sport athletes. Here, here's one. Herschel Walker. Uh football, mixed martial arts, and bobsled. Get off my page. We're done. <laughs> We're done. They, we'll see y'all next week. I'm out. I, uh, they're just throwing names on here. I know they put the rock on here because of football and wrestling. Okay, one is a fake sport, and the other he only did in college. Stop it. It's not fake. I just, I keep it's not that fake. flashback of Geraldo Rivera getting slapped because he called it fake. It's not fake. The script. Story, I'm sorry. It's it is scripted. scripted. It is scripted, and the storylines they you know have a decided outcome for one way or the other, but the action is not fake. I'll give you that. See, and and I know you're a Chiefs fan. Tony Gonzalez, really? Basketball and football? Just because he dunked it after every touchdown? I mean, well, no, he was really good at Cal. College basketball, but he didn't play professional basketball. Exactly. And that's what I call a two sport athlete professional. You got a check for playing baseball for a professional team, and you got a check for playing for a professional basketball slash football, whatever team. And based on Big Show's criteria, which I agree with, my practice is only three. That slaps me all the way up to number 11, Brian Jordan, football and baseball he was just good at both of them he wasn't great but he was decent he was decent uh i'm gonna skip 10 because they have danny Ainge in here at baseball and basketball again he never played professional baseball now this is the one that scratches my head you got prime at number eight you're telling me there's seven better than Deion sanders really This man played a professional football game and a professional baseball game in the same week. Same day, actually. Yeah, yeah. Didn't he come in by helicopter? Uh, yeah, it was the same. He played, I think, for the Falcons at noon and then played for the Braves that night in a playoff game. That's right. That's right. But here's the thing, though. No discredit to Dion because he's a phenomenal athlete and could run circles around me even with half a foot that he's got now. 
But that being said, I think he's that low because he really only excelled in one of those sports. Like, he was a much better football player than baseball player. But when you put the all-time Bo Jackson, he was equally good in both. I, I will agree with you there. What I'm upset is the people that are in front of him. Let me just start with number seven. Oh, yeah. Dave, Dave Kana, Kana Maku. Who? Who? Exactly. Uh, but here's the thing. Never heard of him. He is two sports. His two sports are surfing and swimming. Let that sink in for a second because don't you have to do one just in order to do the other? Not really. I if, mean, yes, if you you're have to surf, swim. You better know how to swim. But when you're swimming, it's a race. So that's a little different. I'll give you that, but... I mean, he was in the Olympics for... But I don't know any swimming, professional surfing, surfing or swimming leagues. Exactly. He he might have got paid for some. Okay. He shouldn't be on that list. Number number six, I get this one. Babe Zaharias, uh, track and golf. Nope. Now, she, she was track and field, and... Um, uh, she did play women's golf, so she got paid, and she was an Olympic medalist in 1932 nope. Los Angeles Olympics. Nope. You don't think so? Doesn't belong on the list. I think she belongs on the list, not in front of Dion, though. Not in front of Prime. Doesn't... So you're telling me that, that golf and, and, and non-professional track should be on that list? I would put track on there. And was she different. on the LPGA? Yeah, or was she, she was. just playing golf? No, she was LPGA. So she has one professional sport. But the reason why I put track on here is because she competed in the Olympics. That means so? that you they don't get paid day in and day out. They don't get paid, but theirs is the ultimate prize. You're, if if you're in the rec league, that's one thing. If you're training and you're going to the Olympics, I'll give you that. I'll give you that since it's the Olympics. That's the tip top. I mean, you can't get paid for it, but it's still the tip top. So I'll give you that. What I don't like is number five, Charlie Ward. Really? You gonna tell me he was better than Dion? And that's in either football or well, his is football and basketball. He, he was pretty good at basketball. I remember him, but those Knicks teams still still sucked. I mean, that's he look. He's playing professionally on both levels. I, that's legit. He should be on the list, but not in front of prime. No, it should be Bo Prime. You're gonna love and that's number four because this is where I have a problem. Number four is Bo Jackson. You're gonna tell me there's three in front of him? No, Bo's number one. Prime's number two, and you can interchange them Bo, if you want. Bo played professional football and never went to training camp. Nope. Never, ever. The week after the baseball season ended, report to the Raiders. Play that Sunday. And it was already middle of the season. It was in yeah. October. But, you know, let's see these final three here, just so we can have a laugh. Bob Hayes, heard of him? Yes, football and track. I'm going to say no. Bullet Bob Hayes? Bullet Bob Hayes. Bullet Bob well, Hayes. Hold on. He was in Why? the Tokyo Olympics for track. I get that, but you shouldn't be in front of Bo. No, nobody nobody should be in front of Bo, but does he deserve to be on the list? I'll give him the list because it was professional football and Olympic track. So now Olympic track is a professional sport. I count it as professional so if, if you went to the Olympics. Remember, like I said, hold on. It's the tip so top. I'm an Olympic I'm an Olympic shot put thrower. Should I be on that list? No. If you if you why run, not if you've had to train your body run and be hold up a shot put though you have to train your body you have to lift you have to be able to push all that you have to train to be able to push that eight to ten ounce whatever pound ball over off your chin and throw that son of a bitch three hundred and fifty yards you have to train just as hard I'm gonna have don't to discredit this. my fat shot put shot I'm, put I'm gonna have to ponder this then because we're gonna have to have a show where we ask ourselves what do we find define as sport. No, no, no. I'm not saying it's not a sport. It is not a professional sport. And for you to be a two-time athlete, you should be paid by both. 
That's my criteria. It would dwindle that list completely down to a handful of people. There would only be four on this list then. Brian Jordan, Deion Sanders, Bo Jackson, and uh, the number one, we'll get to that one in a second. Number two is Jim Brown. Love Jim Brown. He played his ass off with football. They got lacrosse on here. How many people have even seen a lacrosse game? Was it professional lacrosse? He's in the National Lacrosse Hall of Fame. I don't know. It was college, it says here. Lacrosse. I don't even remember anybody. T- Every time you hear about Jim Brown, you talk about what a great person he was, what a great activist he was, what a great football player he was. Nobody has ever come to me and said, hey, do you know how great of a lacrosse player Jim Brown was? That you don't know. No. Uh-uh. I, mm-mm. God rest his soul. Yes, God rest his soul. Damn good football player, damn good activist. Jim, you shouldn't be on this list. And number one, Jim Thorpe. And I've heard all these things about Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe, I wasn't around in 1912. But they say he was one of the greatest all-time athletes uh, in both the College and Pro Football Hall of Fames. He was a uh, top defensive back in college football and a gold medalist in the pentathlon and the decathlon in the 1912 Stockholm uh, Olympics. Now, that's all it says about Jim Thorpe. I don't know. Did he play professional in anything? Professional football. He did play professional uh, football. Uh, I believe. No, well, no, maybe not. Maybe it was collegiate. I know he played for a team that no longer is around, and they were undefeated for like three years straight or some shit like that. I'm going to look it up real quick. Okay, that wouldn't be a professional team then because there's only been one undefeated team no there hasn't you're just talking about modern day nfl there's been back in the early 1900s there's been plenty of oh you mean when there, were only football eight, teams. when there were only eight teams in the league yeah i guess yeah. I, I guess you can look at it like that well you you have to that's part of professional football uh, that is i true. didn't say nfl good point good point but uh uh, I mean, if and if you, you ever to... just on a slight side mm-hmm. note, uh, his autobi or his biography or whatever is very interesting. Jim Thorpe, Jim, yes, like he played, uh, don't say lacrosse. No, no, no. So he played from 1913 through 1919. He was an outfielder for the New York, Cincinnati, and Boston baseball teams in the National League. And he was more and he was successful as one of the early stars of American professional football from 1919 through 1926. Hmm. So he was around for a good Uh, while doing the thing. Yeah, he uh, I'm trying to see real quick. Because he was, he was, he had, he, he was Indian heritage. Yeah, I, I knew that. And like he ran with two different types of shoes. They didn't match. He, he did play lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> Basketball, Man. boxing, lacrosse, swimming, and hockey. Yeah, I've seen Bo do all those things in one commercial. <laughs> Touche. Touche. I'm trying to find out the uh, the teams that he played for. While you fired that up, the Canton Bulldogs. Okay. Okay. So he 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 played in where the, the Pro uh, Football Hall, Hall of Fame, Fame. is. Yep. Okay. And the Chicago Cardinals and the New York Giants. And he was actually, side note, he was commissioner of the NFL for one year. Wow. Okay. Props to Jim Thorpe. Much respect then on that. Still doesn't belong above Bo and Dion. No. No. I put him at number five. No, I put him at number three. 
Yeah, because I'd still put him above Brian Jordan. Yeah, I'll put him at number three. I'd put him at three, too. But yeah, prime is two, Bo is one, period. And I have and I'm open for arguments to interchange those two because there is an argument for Dion to be number one. But I, I am in agreement with you. Your predecessor on this show had that same argument. I showed him a YouTube where Dion himself says that Bo was better. Oh, so of course. From the source. From the source. But that but okay, so who was a better running back? Barry Sanders or Emmett Smith? Barry Sanders. And the argument right, is but Barry Smith will tell you that Emmett Smith is a better running back than he is. He will, but everybody That knows. doesn't mean that it's true. Yeah, but everybody knows if you switch them and put Barry Sanders behind that line and put Emmett Smith behind that crap line in Detroit, it would show. Oh, yeah, that's beside the point. That's not part of my argument. I'm just saying you said just because Dion said Bo was better, who cares? That's just him being humble. It's prime. He's not humble. <laughs> sure he is. He's humble at, when when he needs to be. He's he humble when be. he needs to be. But, that's but I mean, I, I'm i just saying there is an argument that Dion is just as good. So they're interchangeable. Yeah, but to I, me, I, definitively, and, and you're Bo right, Jackson is not They played two different positions. One was on offense. One was on defense. One made Brian Bosworth look like a rag doll. Um one was intercepting passes left and right. So, yeah, I, I definitely get the argument. But Bo was just around. I mean, he was just, he was everything, man. Bo was basically a freak of nature. Yeah. You don't have a big 235-pound dude just lightning fast and running over people. And I never will have, forget his comment when they asked him about the punishment of running back takes. He said he just wants to hurt them before they hurt before they hurt him. Yeah. So why run and around his, and you can run through him? His strength is the reason why he got injured. Yeah. He popped his own hip out of socket. He pulled his leg out of socket, yes, himself. Yeah. So yeah. So it you can say Bo retired himself. And oh by the way, but then he go back he and play baseball. Bionic hip, yes. He played another two seasons with the um, he, White Chicago Sox, right? White Sox. Yep. Yeah. Because so, the Royals let him go. Basically, well, no. He played more than two seasons after the hip injury because he finished his career with another one or two seasons with the California Angels. He didn't play that much with the Angels, but he was productive with the White Sox. Yeah, I just remember him with the White Sox. Yeah. Um. All right, before we close it out, let's talk about the National Football League. And like I was telling everybody at the start of the show, each week I want to focus on a different division. And today I just want to focus on the NFC North. And I asked you, where do you think that they will end up? And what do you think the chances are of any of them getting into the playoffs? Before you answer that, this is where they finished at the end of the season. Not going to worry about playoffs or anything like that, but just their division-wise. The Bears were number three. The Lions were number one. The Packers were number four. And the Vikings were number two. What? Say that again. The Vikings oh. finished second in their division. The Lions finished in first place in their division. The no, Bears they didn't. Were... Yeah. Minnesota did. Minnesota was 13 and four last year. The Lions were nine and eight and missed the playoffs. If they won this, if they won the the division, they would have been in the playoffs. Uh, I thought the Lions were in the playoffs because I thought they beat Green Bay. Nope, because right, but because another team won, it kicked Detroit out. Detroit maybe did not I, make the playoffs. Maybe I got that wrong. Year. Maybe I had the Lions. Maybe the Lions were number two and the uh, Vikings were number one. Yeah, yeah, it's Vikings, Lions, Packers, Bears. That's that's the order that, that of was... last year. Okay, well, oh, I know what it is. You're right. You're right. That's the order that I've got them finishing this season. Gotcha. I've got the Lions finishing number one, Vikings number two. Bears are still in that three slot. The Packers are still in that four slot. And the Packers have no hope. Why you say that? And, and it, it isn't because of Jordan Love. 
it is because they showed too many holes defensively last year. Yeah, I mean, if you're going, if we're going strictly based on last year's performance, then yeah, I'd have to agree with you. But we don't know what they're going to look like this year, we and that's really, that's but... that's the hard point of you just have to look at the moves that they made in the off season uh, yeah, and the that's po- where I'm going. and the potential. The Packers potentially can can make some make some noise in their division just because the division is so sorry. But you know what? I don't think the division is as sorry as people think. I think the Lions are on the come up, man. They are serious. They are getting okay. So you have one team out of the three that are going to be, you know, superbly improved. The Vikings Vikings. are going to fall back. Vikings are going to be the Vikings. Are going to the Vikings are going to fall back? Right. I mean, they they were uh, the beneficiaries of playing in the shitty division of being thirteen and four. Yeah. You know, and the and Detroit was nine and eight, and the Packers were eight and nine, and the Bears were three and fourteen. So it's like they that they, that's a crappy division. Either one of those games swing a different way, and you know the top three are all mediocre. I I, I give you that, but what I mean when I say the lines are going to be scary good. When you have a team that's been down like they've been all these years and they finally start putting it together and learning how to win, some of that is attitude. Some of that is just belief. They got to get out of their own heads. Because, you know, for the longest time, if you've seen the Lions on the schedule, you just mark that as a dub. You just They'll do. Yeah. Well, you're a Chiefs fan. I think you put dubs on everybody across the board. But you, you know, know who the Detroit ASOS. Lions are? You know who the Detroit Lions are? Who are they? The the nineteen nineties era Kansas City Chiefs. That's who they are. Mm-hmm. They're 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 gonna be tough. They're gonna be nasty, but they're gonna break all the Detroit Lion fans' heart in the end. Hmm. They're not gonna compete for a championship. They don't have a quarterback that's going to do it. Jared Goff is not going to take them to the promised land. Mm, mm, mm. That's a damn good comparison. I mean, who's, who's, uh, who, I, I'll just ask you this. I, I just gave you the quarterback without looking it up, without typing anything. Name me four other players that play for Detroit. That play for Detroit? Wow. Can't do it, bro. Right. Can't do that's it. My, that's my point. Name me four players that play for the Vikings. Okay. If I don't count Kirk Cousins. Count him. He's okay. one. Right now, Dalvin Cook. Okay. Until said otherwise, because he's a, almost a free agent. Um, after that, uh, who is Jeff, Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver? And I can't go any further than that. Okay, that's three. I mean, that's not that's not bad. Uh, name me three Packers. Jordan Love, for obvious reasons. Um, Jones, God, I forget his first name, but he was the uh, running back. There's another Jones who is a wide receiver. He's not very good. And God, I can't name another Packer. Name me three Bears. I can't name one right off the top of my head. I even forget the quarterback's name. Justin Fields. Thank you. You named it for me. I can, <laughs> unless you can name the other two, I'm I can't give you any two bears. I, I really I, can't I, either. I can give you the entire Roquan Smith starting. Go- yeah, there you go. I can give you the entire starting lineup for the defense of the '85 Bears. But um, oh yeah, that's easy. <laughs> yeah, that, see, that's my winners. point. There, that that division doesn't have. I mean, but if I told you to name. Five Chiefs and five Broncos and five Raiders and five Chargers. You could do it without missing a beat. Yeah, given that that's our division, though. Okay. If I told you to name me five Cowboys and five Redskins and five Eagles and five Giants, you could do it. I could probably do the Cowboys and the Eagles. I don't think I could do five for the Redskins. Okay. Um. Buffalo, New York, uh, who else is in their division? New England and, and the Dolphins. 
Miami. You could name five from there from each one of those teams. Or probably damn close so. to it. Probably so, yeah. That's my that's my point. That that division is so weak, it's up for grabs. Now, I do agree with you. Detroit is going to make some noise, but they're not going to put any fear in the NFL overall. No, not yet. No, I, I, now remember, I said they're on the come up. I didn't say how far right. up yet. Because they have, they have to get a quarterback. I'm be honest, they have. I love their head coach. I, I love his fire. Mm-hmm. The team play. The team plays. Um, they uh, they play inspired know, for after him. him. Yeah, I, I I like that. I really do. However, until they get a quarterback and they get some monster wide receivers. You know, and I mean monster when I say just in production. I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, they have to go get the second coming of Megatron. But yeah, you know, they the, the quarterback position is key. Anyone any team that we pick to compete for the Super Bowl this year, the overall connecting factor is going to be the quarterback. And Jared Goff out of the 32 teams might rank 25, maybe. I'm sure I can make a case, right? I'm sure I can make a case for him to be at 30, 31, or 32. Yeah. And that's counting the rookies that are coming in the league. To me, the only notable quarterback in that division is Cousins. And that's by default. And I would say Love is a second, a close second, just because we've actually seen him play. Yeah. um, He actually almost beat Patrick Mahomes in the Chiefs. Now, before we uh, cut out of here, just pulling a plug for Netflix, uh, there is a series. Tomorrow. Yes, quarterback. It follows three quarterbacks, one of them being um, uh, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to pay for that one. Okay, there are, there are two more quarterbacks. The other I'm one. I'm writing that one be, down right there. Um, what is his name? Uh Marcus Mariota. Yeah, Marcus Mariota. And then there's a one, Patrick I think Mahomes. Steve DeBerg plays for the Chiefs, something like that. One of those guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, me and a friend were talking about that uh, yesterday because I'm like, how did they just luck out and pick a Super Bowl contending quarterback? They had to have had more quarterbacks on here, but you signed a waiver saying that you may or may not get in the show. I don't think it has anything to do with them winning the Super Bowl. I think that's just, I think that's just a uh, a bonus, so to speak. You know, because it's like hard knocks. They don't know those guys are going to do anything. But if you look at how it lined up for them, it's perfect because you've got oh, yeah. you've got the tip top echelon quarterback. You've got well, you were going to get that regardless. Yeah, you you've got the guy that has so much potential, but. Every year something goes wrong, and then you talking about Mariota. No, I'm talking about Kirk Cousins. (laughs) Mariota is that guy that you expect something, but it just goes downhill from the start. Yeah, he hasn't really had some good. He hasn't really had good luck. No. But before we change subject here, I want to give you because you gave me your list, and I want to go over it again. So you said Lions, Vikings, Packers, Bears. No, Lions, that, Vikings, Bears, Packers. So you're saying Packers are going to... Wow. And it's not going to be like they're a total loser. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Lions, Packers, Vikings, Bears. Okay. And, and folks, just to let you know... these. And I think the winner of the division might have 10 wins. I would agree with that. We now, are, we I are do reserve the right on the uh, website, and uh, I do reserve the right to change season. my mind before we do our picks of the year because we do we we get to do our picks again after after the preseason and the rosters are set, so we have a more idea. But oh, as yeah. of today, that's my pick. Yeah, this is as of today, and we're just going through division by division. Next week is the AFC North. AFC Norris division, and that is going to be the Bengals, Ravens, Steelers, Browns. Good deal. 
Now, on a side note, but also playing football, um, I just I always thought about this. You know the Super Bowl where the where the Seattle Seahawks and the Patriots were playing, and instead of running beast mode, uh, they did that quick slant, and the Patriots intercepted, and they won the Super Bowl. Remember that one? I remember that. I was watching, uh, I think it, they were like just uh, marathoning a football life over the yeah. weekend, a couple weekends ago. But the 2006 Rose Bowl between USC and the Texas Longhorns, do you remember that game? I do not. Uh, Vince Young, Reggie Bush, okay. and all that. Okay. Yeah. But Pete Carroll uh, was the coach for USC. Yeah, I remember that. that I did not realize the head coaching in the league. Right, but I did not realize, and this, and when I seen, I was like, "Well, oh, that—that's why he made that decision in the Super Bowl." Because everybody's like, "How can you not run beast mode?" Well, in that game, it was fourth and inches, and if they would have converted, they would have won that championship game because they'd been able to run out the clock. They went for it. They ran the ball on fourth and inches, and Texas stuffed them, mm -hmm. and then was able to get the ball back and run it down to Vince Vince Young. Uh, ran it in, scored, they, and Texas ended up winning the national championship that year. Yeah. I always want, but what it just, you know, just as a football fan, I was thinking that's why Pete decided to throw instead of run beast mode because he's probably already been him. burned. Yeah, it haunted yes, him. And now he's been burned twice. Yeah. So now he, he's in no man's land when it comes down to uh, fourth and goal. Yeah. He's just going to punt it. He's going <laughs> to fake punt next time. A <laughs> one yard punt. <laughs> That sounds like something Pete might pull up. And, and I know that's completely off the topic, but I just wanted to, while I was thinking about it, because we're talking about football, I was like, man, that's that's got to be why he made that decision, because he got burned in that championship game in 2006. Yeah, he already had a couple championship rings, too, so you're right. Man, I never even thought about that. So, yeah, you heard it here from Big Show first, y'all. If uh, Pete Carroll gets into a position where it's a one-yard punt, that's why. No need to scratch your heads. That man is having it's, nightmares. The the play he's going to run is the annexation of Puerto Rico, baby. What? No Statue of Liberty? But there. <laughs> okay. And if anybody gets that football movie reference, be sure to put it at the bottom there. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. Keep watching. If you haven't already, subscribe. Show you got anything before we get out of here? Ah, uh, nothing, nothing special. Just like I always say, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate you and love each other. Tomorrow is definitely not promised, so make today count. See y'all next week. All right, see y'all later.